On which free-to-air television channel would you expect to find a late-night sex show alongside the minutes of a council meeting where the subject for discussion was littering outside a local fast food restaurant? Well, only one place, public access television. These local channels for the civic-minded have provided an often strange mixture of programming for more than 30 years. But now, across various parts of the country, public access TV is under threat, as Brian Rooney now reports. Tune in for a moment to New York's Reverend Billy and his Church of Stop Shopping as he crusades against consumerism. We will love our way to this new world beyond shopping. Or listen to the ukulele disco. Especially people who care about strangers. In Los Angeles, get your advice about sexual matters from Susan Block. And pleasure is what we're talking about here on the Dr. Susan Block Show. You from her production studio in downtown Los Angeles, she'll show you and tell you things you will never see on commercial television. Well, I would suggest you go to a swing party. We've, we've thought about that. They're all players in what is known as public access television. Those cable channels set aside for anyone with a video camera and something to say or who just wants to take their clothes off and dance. Since the beginning, it's been the venue for people who were unlikely to get airtime anywhere else, including the occasional Nazi. You're in Race and Reason. This is uh, the set of the Dr. Susan Block Show. Susan Block started a show from her own bed back in 1992. I love nuts and sluts and wackos, but, you know, that's, that's me. And that's a lot of people. A lot of people do want a different voice. A lot of people want something fresh, something that isn't censored. Public access is for the unknowns. I'm going to run. I'm running six miles an hour. I'm going to do a painting. And what are we going to cook and blend? We're going to make spicy cheese balls. And little known. Here's a Chicago public access talk show that once hosted a man who, at the time, needed introduction. Yeah, from the 13th district, Hyde Park, which is where he lives, with his wife Michelle and two young daughters, and you've been to State Center for six years. Excellent memory. Uh, <laughs> you passed the test. It started back at the dawn of cable television in the later 1960s, when some public-minded citizens argued that, in exchange for ripping up streets and wiring utility poles, the new cable television companies should set aside channels for free use by the public. Oh, I am just a man. In 1984, Congress passed a law that said local governments could require cable companies to provide public access channels along with free studio space and equipment. Hello, I'm Leslie Dutton. In Los Angeles, Leslie Dutton appeared for years on one of those channels with a serious public affairs program called Full Disclosure. She actually won an Emmy Award. Public access is a vital service to reach the public to bring the community together. We have community problems, we have community issues, and the channels that are provided by public access bring the community together. Uh, we need to get some pictures of But she's been knocked off the cable by a new I, California I law well that says the hardwired television providers no longer have to give away free studio space, equipment, or even a channel. The intent, legislators said, was to make it cheaper for telephone companies to enter the television business without the financial burden of public access. In Los Angeles, all public access will be funneled into one channel controlled by the city. But what's even more of a problem is who's going to decide which shows will be on that channel. Uh, it's very easy for government to silence their own critics. It's a problem when government is in control. It could be a problem for the Los Angeles gadfly known as Zuma Dog. Meanwhile, they say we're going to close down libraries. We're going to show features his outbursts at the L.A. City Council. He's betting that he's not likely to be one of the stars of the city-controlled public channel. For me, the core of public access, when you have a lot of different national news uh, mediums, this is the one chance for the people to get up there and say, our city's under attack of corrupt politicians. They pulled the plug on public access. At least 20 other states across the country have changed the dial on public access, taking away the free studio space and cutting back available channels. So am, am I the squarest who's ever sat on the edge of your no, bed? No, no. 
Well, I've had some squares on, on the edge of my bed. <laughs> some no, say no, that in the age of YouTube and the Internet, public access is no longer necessary. Not Susan Block, who may not look like a Yale graduate, but she is one. Well, the Internet is fantastic, but it's not the same as local community television where I get to talk directly to my neighbors. A lot of people feel that way, and not just old people. There's a lot of young people that call my show. Yes, hi. Hi, Vivian. Uh, because it is a call-in oh, show. A lot of people don't get uh, high-speed Internet access. It may not yet be time to say goodbye to the Reverend Billy, Zuma Dog, and Susan Block. These are people with a talent for exposing themselves and their views. Public access is, uh, is being strangled to death by corporate misers and government censors, by uh, people that want to take the voice of the people away from the people. A voice that is unfettered, uncensored, and often uninhibited. I could put you up on the bondage cross. No, you couldn't. That's... This is Brian Rooney for Nightline in Los Angeles.